Assalamualaikum and a very good day to everyone and also madam who is watching this video. So today, I will be presenting the answer for assignment 1 of the database system subject, uh, which is uh, drawing a complete ER diagram based on the question that was given. So this is the question that was given to us. Uh, as you can see, from here, we can get the information and also all the requirements that are needed to draw the ER diagram. Um, so first of all, uh, the question requires us to identify the main entity types and also to list out at least three attributes for each entity and underline the primary key for the entity. So, and then draw a complete ER diagram based on all the entities that have been listed. So this is the complete ER diagram that I have drawn based on the entities that I have found. So you, as you can see, these are the entities and there are at least one, two, three, four, five entities. And also you can see here, these are the subclasses and one, two, three, four subclasses for each of these entities, superclasses entities. So first of all, I'm going to show you the, all, uh, I'm going to explain each of the entities that was are already listed. Uh, the first entity is the branch entity. And under the branch entity, you can see there are three attributes here, which are the branch name, the branch city, and also the, the address. Uh, so in the question, there is actually only two attributes that was mentioned, which are the branch name and also the city of the branch. Uh, so I added another one, which is the address attribute. And you can see here, this is the un an underlined attribute and this is the primary key. Uh, so, uh, to explain an, a primary key, for something to be a primary key, it needs to be something unique, something that is different to, in order for you to identify the entity. So, in this, in this case, the question have already mentioned that the branch name is a unique name. So, in this case, the branch name is the primary key. Uh, and uh, then we'll go to the next entity, which is the customer entity. Uh, under the customer entity, you have the attributes customer ID, the name, and also the address of the customer. And this one, the underlined one, is the primary key, which is the customer ID. So the next entity is the account entity. You can see here the attributes are the account number, the account balance, and also the access date of the account. Uh, and the account number is the uh, primary key for the account entity. And you can see here, here, this are the subclasses for the account entity and the subclasses are the saving and also the current uh, for the subclasses for account uh, it was not mentioned there was no mentioned attribute so i added this uh, for the sake of it uh, the uh, so for the saving i added the attribute extracted amount and for the current i added the current amount as the attribute uh, so we'll go to the next entity which is the loan entity you can see here the attributes are the loan number which is the primary key and that's also the loan amount and that's the loan payment under the payment in the payment uh, there are also dates and also the amount that is included in the payment uh, attribute so under the loan entity, you have the subclasses, which are the housing loan and also the vehicle loan. Uh, so the, for the housing loan, you have the attribute uh, property data. And inside the property data, there is also included the address and also the value of the property. And then the next is for the vehicle loan the vehicle loan have the attributes registration number and the color and also the type of the vehicle 
So this is for the loan and then we'll go to the next entity which is the bank officer. You can see here the underlined one is the primary key and the primary key for the bank officer a bank officer I uh, entity is the employee ID and you can also have the attributes uh, uh, name and also phone number and also start date of the employee of the bank of officer so these are all the entities that are listed and they are given uh, inside the question so now we are going to explain the relationship between these entities uh, so first one is the relationship between the branch entity and also the customer entity. Um, in the question, there is no specific ma specific mentioned uh, of relationship between the branch and the customer. So I'm going to go for common sense here. Uh, so uh, as you can see here, uh, the branch of a bank we were talking about the, the a bank uh, database system so for branches of a bank you can have each for each branch you can have at least one or more customer one or many customers so this is the one to many relationship and then for a customer you can be associated with at least one or uh, many branches so this is also one to many relationship so between this one is uh, it's a uh, many to many relationship and then we'll see the relationship between the customer entity and also the account entity uh, you can see here a customer can have at least one or many accounts and an account can also be held by one or many customer. So, in this case, the relationship between the customer and the account entity is the many-to-many -many, uh, relationship. And then we'll see the relationship between the customer and the loan entity. Uh, you can see here, a loan can only be held by one and only one customer while a customer as we know can hold uh, one or many loan um, so that's the relationship between the loan and the customer uh, entity which is uh, one to many I I'm sorry which is many uh, yes which is one to many and then We'll see the relationship between the loan entity and also the bank officer entity. You can see here, uh, the loan can be associated by one and only one bank officer, which has, uh, can also be known as the loan officer. And the bank officer or loan officer can only hold, uh, be associated on, with only one loan. So uh, that's the relationship between the bank officer and the loan uh, and the loan entity, which is one to one relationship. And then you can see here, I'm going to explain about the subclasses of each entity. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm going to explain the subclasses for each entity. So first, I'm going to explain about the loan entity subclasses, which are the housing and also the vehicle entities. You can see here, I wrote mandatory or. So for mandatory, it means that the loan, there are only two types of loan, which are the housing loan and also the vehicle loan. And that's what it means by mandatory, which means there are no other types of loans that are available except for these two. And also for or, you can see here or, what it means by or is that uh, you can, uh, is that a customer can hold uh, one uh, one type of one type of uh, loan. Uh, for example, uh, a customer can hold uh, the vehicle loan, but at the same time, he or she can also hold a housing loan, which means uh, he or she can hold both loans at the same time. So that's what it means by the or here. 
and then for the next one which is the account entity uh, subclasses which are the saving and also the current entity also the same I, I wrote here mandatory and or I'm not sure if you can see clearly but this is mandatory and this is or so for mandatory which means that there is only two types of account which are the saving account and also the current account so uh, that's what it means which means that there are no other accounts except for these two types of accounts and for or it means that the customer can hold one or one type of account or uh, the customer can also hold another type of account at the same time which means uh, he or she can hold uh, two types of account at the same time so that's what it means by this mandatory or here so I think uh, that's all that I can explain about this I guess that's the end of my presentation today so I hope everyone enjoy it and I hope it is easy to understand if, despite of my jumbled up words. Uh, so thank you everybody and have a nice day. Thank you.